Start your engines. We're about to tour the scenic Callahan Valley by snowmobile. Then we'll kickstart your day with a super juice. Healthy, hearty and delicious is the way to go. Plus, it's time to cheer on Canada's Paralympic athletes. Stick around. That's all on this episode of Go See to Sky. Welcome to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, down by the river at Meadow Park. The mountains have a lot to offer. Whether you're skiing down them or touring up, they act as a natural playground for those who want to enjoy Canada's outdoor oasis. So why not travel through the mountains by snowmobile? You'll cover a lot more ground and faster. And with Canadian Wilderness Adventures, they help even beginners climb to some of the highest peaks. And because you'll work up an appetite, they'll have something waiting for you at your destination. Have a look. Outside and up in the mountains, it's just good for the soul. There are many ways to travel through the wilderness. Your mode of transport is often just as exhilarating as the views you'll take in. On this trip, we'll travel by snowmobile. Uh, we're going to go over some safety stuff before we get out on trail. I uh, just want to make sure you guys are comfortable on your machines and then uh, we'll head on up and get some breakfast on the way. Yes, a Yukon breakfast awaits, but we'll have to earn it. This journey starts with a full review of our machine, including safety procedures, operating instructions, and riding guidelines. You need to grab that, lift it up, and then a little gray or orange button down here on the left-hand side. Push and hold it for a couple seconds and your machine should kick to life. Canadian Wilderness Adventures guide Jordan Cherneski has been introducing riders to snowmobiling for three years. With an education in adventure tourism and a passion for sledding, he has just as much fun as his guests. I love guiding because I get to take people that have never done an activity and teach them how to do it. And I can see them break out of their comfort zone and see the smiles that it puts on their faces at the end of a tour. Carving our way through the remote backcountry of the Callahan Valley, past snow-covered lakes, the pristine views have an added thrill when you experience them with the power of a snowmobile underneath you. But it's not all about the ride or destination. Be sure to stop and take in the serene views that surround you. All right, guys, how's the ride going so far? It's great. All right. Uh, so welcome to the Sprout Mountain Lookout. We've got the Tantalus Mountain Range off to the left here. There's Daisy Lake way down in the valley and the Brandywine Mountain up across from us. Leaving the lookout behind us, the landscape begins to change as we continue to wind our way up the rugged mountainside. It gets steeper, tighter and more technical as we enter the old growth forest. You're progressing into this area where the trees are 500, 600 years old and it's just this massive tree canopy all around you. It's just, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. Emerging through the trees, we've climbed to 1,600 meters, where a warm breakfast awaits. All right, guys, come on in. It's nice and warm for you. Inside the toasty cabin, we're greeted by other riders, all eager to share tales of the trails during their morning ride. You just got to kind of hang out with all the other people that have come up. You know, if you know them or you don't, you start to know them by the end of it, and you, you develop this camaraderie between everybody. Cooked on an old-fashioned wood stove, the hearty serving of breakfast hash, pancakes and maple syrup are deliciously satisfying for riders who have worked up an appetite. And it tastes even better when accompanied by pristine views that surround the rustic wood cabin. But once breakfast is over, there's still more riding to be done. We head to a frozen lake where we can really let loose. It just gives you a chance to open up the, the engines on the snowmobile a little bit more and feel out your throttle. The sun shining and the wind at our back. We have confidence instilled by our experienced guide to choose our own adventure. Then we return to the trails for a ride back to reality. Well, that tour with Canadian Wilderness Adventures was thrilling and yet relaxing all at the same time. If you want to know what I mean, you'll simply have to try it for yourself. Well, it's time for this week's edition of Go Listen. They're not your traditional rock trio as they all play in multiple bands and live all across Canada, but that doesn't seem to have an impact on the music produced by Beekeeper. Have a listen. It's 
easy to make some sort of busy as bees joke about Beekeeper. The rock trio all play in multiple bands, they have members living in different provinces, and they're currently working on two new albums at once, all following the release of their newest EP, Shout at People. It's a short ride, but it's, it's pretty wild. It's, I mean, we go through a lot of we go through a lot of emotions, we go through a lot of meter changes, and we go through a lot of stylistic changes in a brief 13 minutes or so. Shout Out People represents, I guess, the culmination of a few years of trying to figure out what exactly we were doing uh, in, in Beekeeper, this kind of blend of uh, weird, absurd math rock and kind of more abstract music and our just love for pop and the band Aqua and Katy Perry and Male Female Harmonies. I will change your name. I heard that you create puzzles and Luke has to solve them. What kind of puzzles are you throwing at I think I can be sort of an annoyingly puzzling person sometimes. Just uh, I like to write really weird tunes, really weird rhythms, really weird uh, sort of time signatures and stylistic changes. Uh, and I think I also, just like I'm pretty influenced by Andy Kaufman and uh, kind of the idea of somebody who is so many characters but doesn't know who he truly is. I feel like my role is to um, is to to bring some uh, some foundation to it and, and and make it solid and make it real and bring it to, to life. Uh, whether that's in the music or our plans or uh, our comedy uh, or our, our imagery that we that we use on our albums and our, our website and stuff. guys talking about different roles and stuff involved in other music projects on top of Beekeeper how do they fit together and do you find it maybe even beneficial to be involved in those different groups the members of Beekeeper play with uh, play with Sydney York play with Hay Ocean we've played with Bear Mountain play with lots of uh, groups that get out there and uh, it's performed for various crowds of people all that experience is so great uh, and it kind of culminates in Beekeeper, this absurd thing that probably shouldn't work, but for some reason does. There's conflicts, and I mean, we're not all in all of the same band, so th I mean, there, that's inevitable, but I think a lot of the greatest bands, especially in Canada, have sprung from collectives, and this is just one of those collectives. Right now, you guys are in the process of recording. What are you recording? What can you reveal? And how soon might we hear that? Uh, we're working on two things right now. The first thing is our next uh, full-length album would be the follow-up to Shout at People. The crazy bits are crazier. The poppy bits are way poppier. Uh, it's really pushing the extremes of, uh, of Shout at People. And uh, we're also recently started working on a kids record that we'll put out after that. Um, so I think maybe sometime in the new year, maybe for the next record, and then the kids thing, it's in the future. We really want to make sure it's uh, it's excellent and kid appropriate. Keep up on those new records at bkpr.ca where you'll also find the band's library of releases and a tour schedule. If you've missed one of our stories with Go See to Sky or you'd like to catch a full episode, everything's available online in HD. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go See to Sky, we're your local voice. Coming up, the point of juicing is that you're getting a mass amount of nutrients and minerals and vitamins in one condensed strength. Healthy and hearty, we kickstart your day the right way. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Hi folks, Don Taylor here. Need a lift? At Levin Machinery, they sell, rent, lease, and service machinery, big and small, for your material handling needs. And they offer certified training. Stack it, reach it, lift it, levit. 
One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, by the river at Meadow Park. Juicing, it's a common term these days and means exactly what you think, turning your favorite fruits and vegetables into a healthy, hearty drink. But like all new things, it can be intimidating. What vegetables go well together? Should I add fruit or maybe I should add another supplement? Well, lucky for us, the Sea to Sky Corridor is filled with many certified raw food chefs and other health professionals that are ready and willing to help you out with all your juicing needs. This week on our DIY episode, we head to Nita Lake Lodge and get a lesson in juicing. And here we are starting off our morning the right way at beautiful <laughs> Nita Lake Lodge at the Fix Cafe. And Marina, you are a certified raw food chef and nutritionist. Correct. And you are teaching us how to start our morning with a cleanse. Yes, this is a cleansinator. Best way to start your morning. And now it is a juice, and a lot of people are getting into juicing these days, but how do you know what to put in your juice? Well, you know, pretty much there's lots of different recipes. You can follow, you know, recipes to see what suits you and what ingredients that you prefer to have. There's so many different options. For the cleansinator, we like to put in some dino kale and some celery and cucumber, some lemon, top it off with some ginger and some apple if you want something a little sweeter. Pineapple works really nice in this drink as well. Okay, so the kale, the celery, cucumber, what's that doing for your body? I mean, that's a lot of vegetables in the yeah. morning. Well, that's the point of juicing is that you're getting a mass amount of nutrients and um, minerals and vitamins in one condensed drink. So uh, it's a good way to start the morning. It's all cleansing. It's very hydrating. Over the night, we tend to dehydrate. So in the morning, we want to clean everything out. The lemon is very good for alkalinizing the body. All of these are alkalinizing foods. And the ginger is nice for metabolism, kind of kick it up. And if you really want to kick up your metabolism, and you're brave enough, you can add a little bit of cayenne in there. Okay. It gets things going. So now when you're putting this all through the juicer, uh, you know, this is quite the hefty machine you have, but people at home can get a basic machine or you could do it in a, a basic blender. Absolutely. I mean, the juicer we have is a commercial juicer, so you're not going to want to put that in your house, but uh, there's lots of juicers on the market you can get. I would highly recommend a slow lager. It's like extracts the juices more slow without heating the juice up. If you really want to invest, a Norwalk would be the best way, which is pressing the juice, but that's really taking it to the next kind of level. Okay. But uh, if you don't have a juicer and don't want to invest in one right now, you could put everything in a blender which would have the fiber of the fruit, which is also, it turns more into a smoothie right. rather than a so juice. It's a little thicker. Which is fine, you can add okay. all sorts of things, coconut oil and milk, you can add spirulina for an extra shot of nutrition that has all your essential amino acids. Uh, there's lots of things you can do to play around, but if you're gonna blend, you'll definitely get the fiber that way, and which slows the sugars from being absorbed into your body a little bit more. So, so find, a, way. find a combination that works for you, Yeah, absolutely, basically. or come join us. We make a bunch of different combinations here at the Fix Cafe. And Perfect, and here we have it. This yeah. is our cleansinator. This is the cleansinator, which I am going to make you drink because it is early in the morning. <laughs> you so have to try. We've got kale, celery. You have kale, celery, cucumber, lemon, ginger, and apple. I put a little bit extra apple just okay. to sweeten it up a little bit for you because uh, people who are first starting to juice, it's a bit much sometimes to jump straight into all vegetables. That is perfect. Yes. That is the way that I want to start my morning. Good. Thanks Good. for showing me how. You're welcome. <laughs> It really is that easy. Simply pick the fruits and vegetables that you enjoy and blend them together. Don't be afraid to experiment and try new things. And that's exactly what brings us to our next story. Vanessa Stark is well known around these parts for her artwork that captures the mountains and the wilderness. But she wanted to expand and simply try new things. Now she's taking her art from canvas to clothing. Have a look. I just kind of let myself go and get into it, so I'm not even really thinking about much. Usually my mind's just kind of wandering away and 
Yeah, so it's really relaxing, almost like meditating. Letting her paintbrush guide her, Vanessa Stark becomes mesmerized by soft, subtle strokes of color drifting across her canvas. I think it's really an intuitive painting style that I do, so it's, um, I usually listen to music and relax and just kind of let it flow. Not fitting with a particular genre, Stark coined her work Mountain Style, inspired by her active life on the West Coast. A local to the Sea to Sky Corridor, her work can be found in several local venues. I think my art is really like mountain style fun. It's um, been really influenced by my lifestyle, which is like snowboarding, mountain biking, and living the good life in the mountains. So I think it reflects that. Her passion for the outdoors, balanced with her artistic talent, has led Stark down a variety of avenues, from commissioned work for homes to top sheets for prior snowboards. Always pushing the boundaries, Stark has now grown from canvas to clothing. A couple years ago, I started doing the baby shirts, and those went really well, and then I wanted to expand into adult shirts. And yeah, so I put my Wild and Free series on the shirt, so I have three different designs right now. The Wild and Free series is a combination of an original drawing merged with a typographic map. It's then screen printed on the shirts at a shop in Pemberton. I have an animal and a map together because there's a connection between the land and the animal and the spirits of that area. So I think it gives more of a story to the piece that you're looking at when you see the map and the animal together. An affordable and practical piece of art, Stark sees it as a way to make her work accessible to all and hopes the unique medium will continue to flourish. You see people you don't know wearing your shirt that you designed and it definitely makes you feel a little smile. Come on. <laughs> From large canvas pieces to small prints, she's been selling her work for 10 years but turned her passion into a full-time career just three years ago. She attributes her success to her mountain community, both for inspiration and support. Her art is warm and inviting. Every piece tells a different story, but Stark's whimsical movement and vibrant tones leave it to the observer to say how it ends. Well, we would love to hear from you here at Go See to Sky. Maybe you have an idea for a show we should do or a story in your community. Simply get in touch with us at facebook.com slash go see to sky. Later in the show. My back exploded like a grenade going off. I was never supposed to walk again. Going for gold during the 2014 Paralympic Winter Games. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV volunteer program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Hi folks, it's me, Don Taylor, way up here with my friend Murph. At Levitt Machinery, they sell, lease, rent, and service all these machines, and they offer certified training. Need a lift? Stack it, reach it, lift it. Levitt. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world. Daily on Shaw TV. Welcome back to Go Sea to Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, hanging out down by the river at Meadow Park. The Sea to Sky Corridor has endless things to see and do, but if you need a break from the wilderness or find yourself in Vancouver, why not check out the Vancouver Museum and an exhibit called Playhouse, the architecture of Daniel Evan White. He knew exactly how to play with houses. The Vancouver architect drove innovation on the West Coast from the 1960s to 2012, and our Johan Award toured the exhibit and tells us what it's all about.
He looks like a nice man. I heard he was very private. Uh, yes, from what I hear, and uh, we've talked to a lot of people who work with them personally as clients or architects. He was so dedicated to his work. This is, and it's one of the reasons why people don't know him. He was just, he went from one contract to another. Very busy uh, designing and uh, not so interested in the promotional part. Daniel Evan White focused on residential architecture, so he's known for his houses. And um, he really paid attention to uh, who was going to live in the houses. Why would he decide to create a house as a bridge? One of the owners of the house was a bridge engineer. So as they were discussing solutions, it became uh, obvious that a great way of taking advantage of this site would be to build a bridge-like house that would span over the gully. So you can imagine, uh, you have a forest here, you have the water uh, stream coming through and, and uh, the water going comes down. right underneath? Yes, right under and going to the ocean. I'd love to live there. That's where you want to live? Yeah. Yes, me too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We work with two guest curators, uh, faculty members at the UBC School of Architecture. They've done like three years of intense research on, on this to kind of dig out like the, the drawings, uh, digitally retracing them, and giving us access to kind of a lifespan of um, architectural performance. This work from the 1960s looks a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like to start with this on that timeline because um, a lot of people, when they approach us uh, about Daniel Evan White, think that he only worked um, with people with lots of money, and it, it's incorrect. He worked with a uh, very modest budget as well, and that's one of the first projects that he started with uh, as he was studying. Uh, he was uh, to be become an architect at UBC. Yeah, and even there we can see that, uh, you know, they specialized uh, in uh, difficult sites, work on difficult sites. So that's uh, an ongoing theme and is uh, throughout his career. It's the Museum of Vancouver's first exhibition on architecture. So the exhibit's called Playhouse and we actually get to play. Yes, I like exactly. That. It makes you understand more the complexity because it always looks easy and it ain't that easy to make. No, it's not. And I'm, yeah. not sure. I'm glad it's not timed right now. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> and there's six models, so you can try, you can mix it up okay. because you can also create your own houses. I see some people have done that. So, so that's a cool way to get to know him. Playhouse, the architecture of Daniel Evan White, runs at the Vancouver Museum until March 23rd. Well, if you're not into architecture and you're more of a sports buff, we have just the thing for you, and you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. Sure, the Olympics may be over, but Canada is just warming up. It's time for the 2014 Paralympic Winter Games. Those events can be very exciting and sometimes have a very inspirational message that comes with them. Take, for example, Tyler Mosher, Whistler's snowboarder who overcame a broken back to compete in the first ever Paralympic snowboard cross event. Have a look. Standing to wax his snowboard, Tyler Mosher has overcome the unimaginable. I was never supposed to walk again. On December 30th, 2000, Mosher broke his back while snowboarding after falling 10 meters and landing on the top of his head. My back exploded at one vertebrae, totally exploded like a grenade going off in your body. It ended up being an incomplete injury and uh, you know I got back the muscles that enabled me to walk, although I'm still medically 40% paralyzed below the waist. Preparing his board to head up on the mountain for training, this world champion adaptive snowboarder will represent Canada during the 2014 Paralympics, the first time the adaptive sport will be included in the Games. I was in the legislature with Rick Hansen uh, May 2nd, 2012, when the announcement came out, and I was elated uh, that snowboarding got named to the 2014 program. Um, and in many ways, I won my gold medal on that day. Stacking his bones as though he's walking on stilts, Mosher heads down the 100 steps from his house. Just getting to the mountain is a feat in itself, but one that he's proud to say he's able to do. It's a tough go because realistically, everyone's telling you that you're going to need to be in a wheelchair. And, um, 
it's it's upsetting but you don't you don't dwell on what you don't have you get through by looking at what you do have this won't be his first Paralympic Games. Mosher's cross-country rehabilitation led him to compete for Canada on home turf in 2010. The goal then was not to win a medal, but gain experience as a Paralympic athlete that would help him put snowboarding in the forefront of adaptive sports. I was constantly pursuing uh, the development of racing for the disabled in snowboarding so that it would be funded at the grassroots level so that children living with a disability who wanted to snowboard with their friends would have the opportunity to snowboard. 13 years after his accident, Mosher is going for the real gold. Constantly working on his technique, snowboarding isn't as easy as it once was. He must be focused, completely in tune with his mind, body and board, telling his muscles exactly what to do. He must train hard so that when race day comes, Mosher can simply look through his lens and go as fast as he can. I'm going there as a frontiers person and a pioneer for adaptive snowboarding. I'm going there to represent my country, but I'm not going there as a tourist. I'm going there to win. From Whistler, I'm Heather Butts for Shaw TV. Tyler Mosher races on March 14th, so be sure to have your station dialed in and cheer him on, as well as the rest of the athletes representing Canada at the 2014 Paralympic Winter Games. Well, that does it for this episode of Go See the Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Go with Moto, Vancouver's only local car sharing co-op. What's car sharing? It's thousands of people sharing the cost and access to hundreds of cars. Car sharing offers a reliable alternative to car ownership, fits your lifestyle, and saves you money. With 300 cars, trucks, and even cargo vans, Moto offers the lowest rates in Metro Vancouver. And booking a Moto is easy, online or by phone. Join, book, go. Learn more at moto.coop. It started out like any other spring morning. A morning that I'll never forget. I was an energetic and adventurous four-year-old. I'd been an electrician for 30 years. Without warning, our lives were changed forever. My dog's bark woke me up, and the house was filled with smoke. The pain was unbearable. It's physical and emotional scars. You don't grow up thinking you'll be a burn survivor. It just happens. But there is hope. We support burn survivors on their long journey to recovery. Give today 